Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work at IBM Power Systems Europe on AIX and Linux mostly. This is a personal open source project, so if you want to contact me, use nigelargriffiths at hotmail.com and the wiki page for the project NJMON is tinyurl.com slash NJMON. This is a series looking at the new performance tools and graphs and stats and now we're at video 3, installing NJMON itself and setup both of which are very easy. NJMON is the data collector part, it's written in the C language, fairly simple straightforward C, and you can download the source code and some pre-compiled binaries from our wiki page. The code is quite drastically different for AIX and Linux. Of course, the virtual I.O. server is a copy of uh, AIX with some extra packages in, so they support that as well. If you're actually running it on the VO server, there's a whole load of extra stats for virtual disks and virtual networks and shared storage pools. For AIX, we use a thing called the libpersstat library to get in most of our data, our stats. From Linux aside, uh, mostly the data is coming from the slash proc file system that unfortunately is text files, so we have to do a whole load of grubbing around getting the right format. As well as in JMON, there's a couple of support functions. We want to inject the data we gather with it in JSON format, and then we want to use Python and an injector tool to actually push that into the Influx database. Also to make life easier, we've got a, what we call a collector. This allows NJMONs to connect to the collector on a central machine and it does the injection for you. You can compile NJMON yourself from the source code. It's on the freely available on the wiki. If you're on AIX, you can use the IBM compiler, which is called XLC, or the GNU compiler. I use a mixture of both. They compile uh, perfectly fine. You can find details in the make file that's also downloadable. And the standard options for the C compiler, the minus capital O3 is to switch the optimizer on to make the code a bit faster. And here's the file name. The XX in here is the latest version number. We're currently at 32. And then you need to include the libpersstat library. You do that with this line or part of the line here. If you're compiling on AIX6, you need minus D AIX6 in here. That's because there's some things missing in that older version of AIX in the per stat library, so we just avoid those in the code. And if you want to get the VIO server stats, then minus D VIO server. And if you want the shared storage pool stats, again, you add a minus T SSP. For the Linux side of things, well, you're probably going to use the GNU compiler, similar sorts of details in here, but you don't need the extra library as there isn't a performance library. If you don't want to build your own, then we have some pre-built ones for you that are supplied as uh, binary programs supporting all these versions of AIX. These are the versions in the, the last two years or so. And for AIX 6.1, although it's strictly speaking not supported, this is the last version of AIX 6. We also compile for VIO server 226 and 3.1, the current versions, with the right compiler flags to get the support in. And then for the Linux side, um, for the AMD 64, some people call that uh, the x86-64, um, but AMD was first to get to 64-bit uh, instruction sets. Um, or the Power 8 and Power 9 versions of the Power 9 processor, PPC 64LE. We've got to Ubuntu 18, RHEL 7 and 8, and SLES 12 and 15 are available for you. For each of your particular logical partitions or virtual machines, you just need one nmon file. You don't need all of these, um, and I recommend you stick that file in the right place for AIX in the slash user slash lbin, and for Linux user local bin, unless you have some directory for system admin tools, for example. So let's look at the ngmon command syntax. If you type in ngmon and it's in your path with a minus question mark then it will give you the help information that you need to understand all of the various options very briefly um, it's a little bit like Enmon these first two a number s and the number of seconds that's the number of seconds between the snapshots and the minus c count that's the count of snapshots that it will make before it stops itself you can also use the minus m in a directory and it will just do a cd to that directory before it creates any files and if you use the minus f then it will save the json format into a file for you and then you can process the data from there on unless otherwise told then the njmon will output the json data to your standard output up on your screen. So if you suddenly see a whole load of stats zooming up the screen, then you realize you forgot to either pipe it into some other command or use the minus F to ask it to save it to a file. It will create a file in the local directory or the one you specified with the minus M, uh, the host name of the machine, the time and date dot 
json in lowercase there'll also be a dot err file for error so if there are any problems that it's got when it's running it'll actually report those but notice sometimes it may decide that perhaps the kernel didn't give me back a good response or it said there are none of those devices and we want to report that so it will report that into the file but it'll also say we're going to switch off collecting those stats and carry on okay the perhaps the paging space data isn't there um, but you still can have the cpu the memory disks and networks and it wants to carry on if possible so let's look at the simplest method one of using njmon we're going to use the command and run it to create those two files so we're going to do a manual transfer of those files with whatever method you like to the machine on which you're running the influx db then we're going to run a command called the injector on that json file and that will actually upload the data into the time series database so here's the command we're going to run minus at 60 so that's every 60 seconds and this number in here 1440 is the number of minutes in a day. You'll get used to that number. Um, 144 is actually an old English term for gross. This is 10 gross minutes per day. If you go every 30 seconds, this works quite well as well, then it's 2 gross times 10 per day. The output file, we already covered that. We're going to wait 24 hours, not immediate. You could go for a couple of hundred snapshots if you wanted to wait less time. If you look at the end of the output file, the .json file, it will have a line with just a single curly brace in it. That's a good way of detecting that NJMON has finished collecting the data. We're then going to move that file to the Influx database server. Uh, you can do that however you like. Um, NFS works fine. Uh, FTP, well, we should be using that. Secure FTP, some tools like that will work quite happily. The Inject is a Python program. We know that Python uh, can read JSON files very, very fast, uh, like 60s megabytes or seconds and uh, understand the data so whatever the file name was we're going to just redirect the file into the injector it's going to actually use the influxdb python module so we'll have to install that uh, to let this work and in the injector file in here we've got to check the batch equals true this is good for speed this means the injector will read the entire file in in one gulp and then go through all the records putting the data in this is actually a pretty good test first test to run when you're setting things up so let's talk about that injector program it's written in python 3 you can edit it with vi it's just a text file about 150 lines it's slowly growing over time when we put more optimization in it to make it go faster particularly the batch mode and we've had to add the tags once i worked out the tags were very important with influxdb we added those tags that help us uh, graph the data in group sets if we edit that injector.py file, we'll ignore 10 lines of comments starting with a hash at the top. Then these are things that you may want to change. The local host means the influx database is running on the same server as the injector. You could remotely inject the data if you wanted. The 8086 is the REST API port number for InfluxDB. That's the default. Could be changed, but I found the default works fine. Down in here, this database name is the database name we created when we uh, installed InfluxDB for the first time. We created a database, a time series database for our NJMON data. Of course, it will want to log into that remote computer. In this case, it's local, when it will use this username and password in here. You'll probably have to change that. The important thing at the bottom down in here is batch equals true or batch equals false you'll see this is commented out so you only have one of these lines um, active if it's true then we've got a njmon output file that is complete remember the ending closing bracket then it will do batch loading as fast as is possible you'll actually read the whole file in one go and then group up i think it's like 50 records and put the 50 records into the data in one go and it's makes it run a lot faster if you comment that one out and, and uncomment the second one the false then it will read the data coming in probably down a pipe as njmon generates the data now njmon buffers up all the output and sends it in one write operation out to the injector so it will suddenly get a whole bunch of data it'll go through all that work out that it's the end of a record and push that into the database admittedly there's no batching up of the data but it means the data arrives as soon as it was sent from njmon further down in the file you'll come across the line that looks like this uh, from influx to be import this is the influx database client python module this is uh, mandatory this is how it connects converts our 
JSON data into the format that InfluxDB is called a line protocol data. Where do you get that module from? Next slide. So to run the injector and get it to talk to the Influx database, it needs this Influx database client module written in Python. The project is actually written here. It's on GitHub, and Influx Data is the company behind the Influx DB software. Now you'll find these are packages that you install into your operating system. For Ubuntu, you're looking for a .dev file, and, and this is the name and the version I'm using. On Red Hat, I added this later on, and the version number seems to have gone up. I haven't noticed any particular difference. Of course, Red Hat and other Linux operations need RPM files. You'll notice that this is for Python 3, hence the 3 in the name in here. There's another one without the 3. That's for Python 2.7. That won't work. With the injector. Also note that um, the GitHub says InfluxDB Python and the module is called Python InfluxDB. It confused me a lot and we must get that three in the name or it's not going to be found by the injector. So once we have NJMon collecting data and the data looks good and we use the injector and it doesn't throw any wobblies and we found the data you can see in video 5 if you're using Grafana how to get a first graph up with some data in it just to prove that it's there. Then we can go on to some slightly more complex ways of setting this up and automated data collection. So here's method two for automation. We're going to use SSH to do the bridging between the endpoint and the influx database. And we're going to pass the data through the injector. So mgem one runs on the endpoint, pipes it into the SSH client, secures sockets to the server, and then the socket to the injector and into the influx database. This is going to be very simple if you have SSH already set up for your system admin type users between your logical partitions or virtual machines and your InfluxDB server. If you don't have SSH set up with all those certificates and things, then you may want to look at method three. What we're going to do then is from the Influx database server side of things, we're going to run SSH with the user to add to the endpoint. This is the host name in here. We're going to run the NJMon and we're going to create a pipe and that will be then coming out on the local InfluxDB machine and pass it into the injector. The injector in the code understands how to log on to InfluxDB and sends the data through. You can put these lines in perhaps your cron tab for a daily startup or hourly startup on your central InfluxDB server. So there's one place that you actually do all the running of the commands. And if you want to change the, the number of seconds per snapshot or something, you can just change that in one place in one cron tab file and they will get done perhaps starting the following day with the new parameters. The injector has to be in batch equals false mode so that it deals with each snapshot as it arrives. Turns out a lot of people don't have SSH set up for their production workloads to get the data to a system admin type machine. So we wanted another way of transporting the data to the central site for injecting into the database immediately. And this is where I invented the NGMon collector. This is a daemon that runs on the InfluxDB machine. And NGMon, when it starts up, you tell it where the collector is, the host name or IP address and a port number. It opens up the connection to it, a socket, and the collector accepts that incoming connection and will either save the data to JSON files and or do the injection into the InfluxDB online. So we have this collector, we run that on the Influx database engine. Uh, we do only one of those, it'll actually listen for any NJMon connecting to it. It actually spawns a child process to actually do the work for every connection it gets. There's a collector.config file, we'll look at that in a moment. We've just run one of these and it serves lots of endpoints. The NJMon then, we've got to tell it not only what to, data to collect, but now who to connect to. So this minus P is the port and the minus I is the IP address or the host name. We also can send it a secret cookie, a sort of password type thing. Um, it's lightly encrypted this first packet as NJMon collects to connects to the collector. This will just stop um, rogue processes trying to connect to the collector and fill up your disk space. This is again cronable, but you'll have to run the NJ command on the endpoint, so you'll have every uh, cron tab on every endpoint will have to be an entry for NJMon. NJMon has all the code in it that is needed to connect to the collector. We just need to drop it a few hints of how to do that. We can actually compile out this feature if you don't want it. So if we use the minus I and an IP address or the host name will work just as well of where the collector is. 
the port number that the collector's listening on, and then it has this shared secret, a sort of password that they're both going to use to check that they actually should be connected together. If you don't want this secret, this sort of password in here on the command line, so it will be visible if you're on PS one as EF, we can set a shell variable njmon secret and so it doesn't have to appear on the command line. If you want examples of how to set up crontab, njmon-h has those at the bottom. A little bit more information about the collector. The collector is written in C, it's open source, very simple to compile, and it's about 400 lines of code. Lots of advanced systems programming in here. We're going to start the collector like this, no hub, so that it doesn't stop if you accidentally log out. The collector, and you name the configuration file like this. I'm just using this name, you can choose anything you like. In here we have a port number that the collector will listen on for incoming connections from the njmon, so that port number in the command line must agree. This is the directory it's going to save the data into. Then we have the password or the secret that njmon will pass to it. Again, that has to agree with the njmon calls. If you want it to inject the data into the InfluxDB database, then you have to tell it the name of the injector Python program. And if you want it to save the file as well, then you have to put JSON equals one in here. You could switch off saving the data. Some people don't want to clog up a file system full of JSON files. I actually like collecting them in case I want to reload them later on. We can do the injection or JSON or both. Of course, if both of these are zero, there's not actually th anything for it to do and it will just stop. A couple of notes in here. This injector program must be the version that has batch equals false in it so that it does it as the packets arrive. You can use any port number you like and the JSON files, note if you do collect them, do compress very well. Perhaps you want a weekly job that goes around compressing all the JSON files. Something like 30 to 1, so 30 megabytes will compress into 1 megabyte of data. And finally, method 4, we could use the njmon tool and remotely inject straight into the influx database. Now you might think, well, that's the obvious one we should all do, really. But that requires your endpoints, your virtual machines and logical partitions, to have a Python 3 installed. And they also need the InfluxDB client module installed. If you can do that, then this is low-hanging fruit, an easy way of doing it. Same command as before, piping it straight into the injector. The trick though is in that uh, injector program, Python program, instead of local host in here, you name the remote host that you actually want to send the data to. Everything else in here will be the same. Now, I have experience with many big production servers and they don't like the idea that to run njmon, you'd have to install both Python and an influx client module. They would not allow us to do that. But if you can do that or set up your infrastructure so that uh, all new LPARs or virtual machines have those two things installed then this is an easy option. Very quickly I want to go through some more advanced nmon features. For the Arx and Linux versions of njmon there's a minus k option. This will check this file slash temp slash njmon.pid. If it's there then it will read that file and hopefully find a number which is the pid of the njmon process. It then checks is that process still running and if it is it will stop. This means you can keep restarting the njmon all day, perhaps on an hourly basis. And if you have to reboot, then at the hourly point, it will restart njmon for you. If, however, it finds a perfectly acceptable njmon running, well, it will just leave it running and stop itself. We also have the minus capital P. This adds process stats. Now, warning, there's a lot of stats there for each process. If you have a thousand processes, that can be a lot of data. And we need a little bit further study of how to graph these stats, but at least we're already collecting them if you want them. This is for AOX only. It captures logical volume stats and volume group stats. This can take quite a lot of CPU cycles monitoring these features. If you want to switch them off, the minus capital L or minus capital V will do that. For the virtual I.O. server only, it gathers all the regular AX stats, plus if you put in a minus lowercase v, the virtual disks and virtual network stats. This is what it's doing on behalf of its clients. If you have a shared storage pool, then minus U will bring that in. And if you want the stats about the whole cluster, a capital U. Again, though, a few more CPU cycles for it to do that. And let's say, for example, that Enmon crashes. My first response would be, don't be ridiculous. It's perfect. What are you doing to it? Ha ha ha. OK, now, if you're using njmon and that's being piped into another tool and then that's being piped into a socket and that's coming across the network and then it's going into the collector and that's going into the injector and that's going into the 
influx database, and perhaps the injectors file system was getting thought there could be a whole bunch of things that could go wrong on this great big pipe getting the data to the database. You will probably think because it's the last thing you ran, NJMON failed, and it may not be NJMON that failed. What you need to do is go back to basis at this point. Try method one, getting NJMON to save it to a file. If that works, then it probably wasn't NJMON itself that actually crashed. It's something further down the line. Take that NJMON JSON file and do a direct injection of that into the Influx database. If that works, then the injector is probably okay. It's something else uh, around the system that's going wrong. What I do find is a lot of people are trying to switch on the NJMON debug mode. Now that puts a whole load of trace statements into the output, the JSON data output. Now you can read through that and try and work out what it was doing and what was going on when it failed, but that data is no longer JSON format. You can't then push that down to the injector and expect that to get into the database. It will just fail completely. So don't go down that path. And the trace information may help you work out what's going wrong, but if not, and you think NGMON is genuinely crashing, then on the NJMON wiki page, there are instructions for debugging these two. Both of them are compiled with the debugger information in there, and we can run the debugger, which is a different program for AX and Linux, and it will nail down the source code line it failed and probably what was wrong. That's exactly what I need to actually fix a genuine NJMON problem. When you're running NJMON on an AX, it uses a perfstat library. Excellent piece of technology. For a C programmer, it gives you a very simple access to thousands of stats out of the kernel. But it is a bit of a two-edged sword, as older AX releases have older per stat libraries. Sometimes there are stats missing, well that's because they were only added recently, and sometimes there are big genuine bugs in the library. So to ease our problems around that, I've documented in my expert blog that I'm only really going to support AX levels that came out since. 2017. If your AX is before that, well, we'll give it a go, but sometimes you just have to upgrade your AIX to a currently supported release and remove those bugs. Don't forget, NJMON is a live project, rapid development, things do change. Be ready to accept new versions of the code. Now, not all the stats have been thoroughly checked. Please do a sort of sanity double check of the stats before trusting them to make tuning decisions. Let us know the good and the bad. We'd like to hear a good story and we'd like to hear the bad as well so we can go and fix it. Do give us any good ideas you have or things you'd like to see in NJMON. Well, that's more than enough about installing and setting up NJMON to collect all that stats and get them all pulled into the database. The next video, number four, is about using templates. We've already got in video seven about how to create the templates in the first place. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to know when the next one comes out, please subscribe.